conservation of recovered artifacts, and they place mooring buoys in the water so that divers are able to locate the wrecks and they aren't being damaged by any other means. The sanctuary also brings in money. Tourists from all over come to see this beautiful attraction. The National Marine Sanctuary has become very important to our culture. The citizens are able to participate in various recreational activities and they're able to connect with the sanctuary. The National Marine Sanctuary also helps up or helps our environment. They set up beach cleanup teams so that people can uh, clean up the beaches and keep the environment clean and keep spread awareness to, to help the environment. Sure, people can do this, but quite frankly, everyone is absorbed in their phones or too busy with work. Or we could come out and be honest and say that most people are too lazy and careless to clean up their environment. So in our opinion, a National Marine Sanctuary is going to be very beneficial to Wisconsin. First of all, NOAA teams up with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services to keep track of fish populations. They take nets out to Lake Huron to see if fish are healthy and if populations are struggling, they take measures to bring it back up. According to Heather Rawlings of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, they stock Lake Trout and Cisco. They do all they can to keep invasive species out of the Great Lakes. NOAA also inspires people to help with conservation. The Nature Conservancy Program bought an important area north of Alpena called North Point to preserve one of the most important paths of migration for waterfowl. When a couple of locals went for a walk on a remote beachfront, they picked up 36 pounds of trash. NOAA helps organize beach cleanups to get rid of this litter. Next. The Great Lakes region has an array of recreational activities. In the winter, you can take a field trip to our Heritage Center and learn about the shipwrecks we have here in the Great Lakes. Or, during the summer, you can ride on Thunder Bay's very own glass bottom boat. Additionally, there's also an abundance of snorkel and dive spots here in Thunder Bay. If you're looking for a fun and quick adventure, you can go on one of our more shallow wrecks. Or, if you want a more in-depth experience, you can get a diving license from one of our local dive shops. Furthermore, NOAA is a federal uh, program, so they have more resources. With their extra layer of federal protection, they can help prevent people from stealing artifacts from shipwrecks. They do not, on the other hand, prevent people from diving on these wrecks and fishing in their normal spots. NOAA puts mooring buoys above all the shipwrecks to guide divers and to prevent ships from anchoring and disturbing the shipwrecks. They encourage people to decontaminate their boats when they come into the Great Lakes from the Mississippi River or the ocean. They also team up with school programs to educate students on the value of these important artifacts. When the people at the Great Lakes Heritage Center get new artifacts, they preserve them and put them on display. Next, people come from all over, all over the world for our one-of-a-kind shipwrecks. They stay in hotels, eat in restaurants, and pay for dive charges all of which increases our economic value. NOAA also helps predict the weather using professional weather forecasting tools. How are you going to sail if there are 10-foot waves? This way, you can join, enjoy a nice day on the beach with your family instead of canceling your plans and breaking your hearts. Moving right along, there is a ridge connecting Alpena, Michigan to Amberley, Ontario. When the water levels of Lake Huron were low, about 250 feet lower than today, there was a ridge that turned into a land bridge. Prehistoric people would hunt and camp on this ridge and left behind the driveways they used to hunt caribou. There are also bones found that are about 8,900 years old and are still preserved because of the cold, fresh water. We would never have been able to discover this piece of history if it weren't for Noah donating his time, people, and resources. Without the help, or with the help of NOAA, John O'Shea, professor at the University of Michigan, was able to research these ancient artifacts. This is only the beginning of the contributions NOAA has made. But it wasn't just NOAA. NOAA is such a huge organization. It was having a National Marine Sanctuary that made this possible. A National Marine Sanctuary protects the water and surrounding area. It's not going to put a huge ban on diving and fishing. It's simply going to help protect its inhabitants. The sanctuary would help keep 
the would help keep the vicinity of Lake Michigan it occupies a clean and safe environment. It does not add restrictions. Sherry will pay more attention to what comes in and out of the lake, but no one in National Marine Sanctuary is strictly here to protect, preserve, and educate. Here in the Great Lakes region, there's an abundance of sinkholes that wouldn't have been discovered if it wasn't for NOAA and the resources they provided. These sinkholes contain alien life forms, which aren't really aliens. These aliens live in the sinkhole's water chemistry, which is only found no, almost nowhere else in the world. This water chemistry consists of a high sulfur content and a lower oxygen content. These sinkholes can support extremophiles, which are organisms who can live in barely livable environments, getting off of what they have. They subsist on nutrients found on rock or inorganic rock type matter. They pull sulfur, they pull the sulfur from the water. They also use photosynthesis from the sun. The Purple Ridge Mountains are just one example of what these Purple Ridge Mountains are. These aren't mountains, but in fact, actually purple mats of purple cyanobacteria, which cyanobacteria is a water-based bacteria which uses photosynthesis to create food for itself. This is important because these cyanobacteria are usually only found by mid-ocean ridges, but are only easily accessible in Alpena. What if there are organisms like this around sinkholes in Wisconsin? This would be important to Wisconsin because cyanobacteria help make modern medicine, and having a sanctuary in Wisconsin will help provide different resources to discover even more of these types of organisms. That brings us to the cost and benefits. Some of the costs that come with having a National Marine Sanctuary are the $390,000 for on-water research along with the costs they pay to keep the ships and sanctuary up to date and safe for all. Some of the other costs include the money to explore shipwrecks. The National Marine Sanctuary also has many benefits like allowing civilians to go and visit or possibly dive these historical shipwrecks. But if you can't dive the wrecks, they have other ways of getting you out to see these glorious ships. NMS National Marine Sanctuary also has many other benefits like protecting the ships so that we can enjoy them for years to come. Some other benefits National Marine Sanctuary also has to offer are that people from Alpena can come to Wisconsin. It will be very beneficial because they are already experts on the National Marine Sanctuary. So as you can see, NOAA is very important to our area and will be to yours too. We understand that you have received various comments from citizens regarding the designation of a National Marine Sanctuary. We recommend, however, that you partake in having trial years, which is what Alpena did. This means that you have a sanctuary for a certain amount of time, and if you decide it's not for you, then you can back out. The Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary contributes to the economic, legal, cultural, and environmental welfare of Alpena. The Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary helps make important discoveries that could very well drastically change the future. Some of these discoveries could help make medicine or cures for diseases. If Wisconsin has the undiscovered cure for cancer, it can easily be discovered with a sanctuary. Tell us then, will you continue to ignore the vitality of a National Marine Sanctuary, or will you allow NOAA to provide their resources and knowledge?